Good morning, Slotheads. We are live here. I am in a new location. I'm actually up in uh, beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin at my dad's house. This is my dad, Paul. Hi, everybody. Um, Hi, Paul. He's, he's here. I'm here with him this morning, and uh, we're obviously sitting in front of his HO track, so pretty exciting. Hopefully, everybody can hear us. Can somebody give us a thumbs up that, that we're good and live and ready to roll um, in the chat? That would be helpful. But uh, yeah, I packed everything up and loaded it in a, in a big duffel bag and hauled it up here, so hopefully all our connection everything is working well. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're, we're live, ready to go. Thanks, Jen. Um, but yeah, super exciting. Uh, yeah, we're here. This is the track that I built in my basement uh, two years ago. And then just last September, I hauled it up here to make room for my 132 track in my basement. That's currently, it's still back in St. Louis. But, um, but yeah, we've been doing some repairs on the track last night. Uh, we were up super late, so we're we're a little <laughs> rough around the edges. Uh, we were racing, and uh, of course, we're gonna do it uh, Wisconsin style with Bloody Marys. Um, oh, no coffee this morning for us, but and, uh, and beer chasers with, with the oh, beer man, chaser, <laughs> true uh, Milwaukee Wisconsin style. Um, <laughs> What's that yeah. called? Hair of the dog or something? Where you keep <laughs> drinking the, the morning after? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> But yeah, what's what's been new with you, Joe? Um, not much. Uh, let's see. I managed to a bit of a story. I got to watch the hockey game, Philadelphia Montreal hockey game last Thursday, with uh, my mom, who invited me up to the lodge because she works for the U.S. consulate, so she actually works for your government, and. Um, she got, she got to, to they were all taken out by the um american ambassador for canada so your ambassador the all ambassador for all of canada took everyone out on on his dime it wasn't even taxpayers money so you know don't don't write any uh, hate letters or anything but um he was a very nice guy my mom was like hey this guy's really nice he does this all the time he takes us out he really treats us well and uh, i got to bump, bump elbows with him i got this really cool scarf in a hat. Well, actually, kind of took it from my mom, and she's like, "You want it?" I'm like, "Yeah, I want this. This is awesome." You know, I'm like, "How many of our viewers are American?" And well, you're American. I'm Canadian, so it's it's a perfect little thing. So that's where I got this. Plus, it's helping me this morning because Jen turned down the heating in the garage. It's kind of cold, so it's kind of helping me. Um, so I know that Slot cars. My mom looks at me. She's like, "No, don't ask him that." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm gonna ask him." So I see this guy, and I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" I'm like, "Oh, thank you very much. You know, thank you for the evening. Thanks for you know for the lodge and the hockey game. It's really great." By the way, are you into uh, slot cars at all? And he's like, "No, no, I don't do slot cars." And then I just see the the Secret Service because he's got security around them, right? Like there's three guys always coming into the room, and they're just like looking at me, and they're like, "What kind of questions is this?" He's not answering this. I'm like, "Okay, okay, I'm feeling a little awkward." I'm like, "Okay, no, I just thought maybe." you know, hobbyists or whatever. And people are asking, Oh, what's slot cars? I'm like, Oh, you know, slot cars, those race around track things. And my mom's looking at me like, no, I told you not to do that. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, 42 asking a grown man who is an ambassador to like, you know, some important position about slot cars. Uh, I think I have to make some, uh, some, some more uh, better choices in my life. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, questioning everything, <laughs> but it was a great time. They, they, uh, that's, that's pretty much the highlight of my week of, of slot cars. But uh, speaking of, before we start um, getting into it, speaking of well, embarrassing give me, moments. Give me just a second, because we're going to try to fix some technical difficulties. We get a couple of comments that are saying, your sound is cracking and echoing, but I hear you perfectly fine. Which is not good, because I don't know how to solve that. Crackling and echoing? Yeah, I turned down... Turn down a little bit of the monitor. Can anybody give us a heads up if it's any, a, any better? How about now? How about now? It's, okay, it's now. okay now. Getting better now? Yeah. Okay. I turned down. Yeah. 
Was we're on the fly. Loud? We're on the road. Yeah, we're on the fly. Having some technical difficulties. I think it's probably that you guys were hearing him double um, because I had my oh, volume yeah. up too loud. So Okay. Okay, so, I mean, recap. Got this. Ambassador of, of the United States for Canada. Got this really cool scarf, really cool hat as a gift. Stole it from my mom. And I'm embarrassed to ask a grown, another grown gentleman, the ambassador for Canada from the U.S. about slot cars. So I'm reevaluating my, my life decisions sometimes. But um, speaking of uh, embarrassing moments, uh, before we start this, and I have the opportunity to have your dad, um, Mr. Paul, on the, uh, <laughs> on, the, on the live stream, could you tell us, and everybody watching, what is the most or your favorite um, story about Pete growing up? <laughs> Embarrassing to him, but funny to you. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we come to, back to that? I've been waiting all week to think about it. Yeah, I'll let him simmer on that for a minute. <laughs> okay. So now I have to fill the next uh, 55 minutes so that uh, he doesn't have time to talk about that. Cool. He's going to turn my mic off, probably. <laughs> yeah. If only I was that tricky and knew how to do that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So thanks. Uh, hey, Pistol Pete's in the house. Thanks, Pistol. Uh, Doug, how you doing, man? Conquest, Liam's in the house. Awesome. It's good stuff, guys. And that's it. Um, that was my week. Yeah, so, uh, so been a little bit of a wild week. I drove up here on um, Thursday. What day? Thursday? What day is today? Saturday? Day before yeah, yesterday. Saturday. So that was fun. And then yesterday we got to go to... Uh, Dad took me to a couple of slot car shops up here we haven't been to. Um, nice. So went to a place. I see Pistol Pete is from Briggsville, Wisconsin. That's pretty cool. I have no wow. idea where that is up here. Um, but we went to Lucky Bob's Raceway. Which Lucky is, Bob. Yeah, it's, it was super cool. This massive 124 track and then three or four different uh, HO scale tracks. It just like very pro racing. Like super oh, wow. cool, big old wall of HO scale cars that were like, you know, obviously um, collecting, you know, they were collectible in display cases. So that was super cool um, to see. And then we went to uh, Model Empire, uh, which was also not too far from, from where we're at. Um, and went in there to pick up a couple of, uh, of cars from my track and didn't wind up getting any. And instead came home with six cards for this track and some spare parts and a bunch of other stuff. So we, uh, <laughs> we loaded up and, and wound up doing all right. But uh, yeah, when we got home, my wife was not with us. And when we got home, my wife, like her jaw dropped when uh, she realized I went to a hobby shop and came home without any cards for our track. I think she was a little shocked and she probably wants to send me to hobby shops with, with mom and dad more often if I, if I <laughs> <laughs> come out of there without spending any money. <laughs> Oh man, I, this a similar thing happened to me this week. I sold one of my board games, went to the you know one of the the hobby shops that well it's a board game shop really it's not really a hobby shop guys do forty uh, k downstairs the uh, the big tabletop board gaming and uh, so I saw I saw I sold this uh, board game to somebody and I'm like oh let me go in I'll maybe look for some paints or whatnot and I've got cash in hand and then a board game. <laughs> That comes up a racing board game that I've been wanting for a while that I've played that online or whatever. It's right there. It's in front of me. And I'm like, awesome. So those of you who don't know, Jen and I play a lot of board games. We have over a hundred board games, which might seem like a lot, but it's actually not that much for you, you and my uh, my uh, board game uh, addictions. Um, for I'm talking about Pete because Pete plays board games as well. Yeah. And it was the first time I'm like, I got cash in hand, and this, my board game is right there. I could just pick it up, go to the counter, and walk out with a new board game, and I didn't. Because I'm like, I'm going to Toronto in a week. I'm meeting up with Massimo. I need cash. <laughs> yeah, that so, cash will help you then. Yeah. The board like, games are great. Oh, this is the first time I walked cool out of a board too. game shop with money. Uh, what uh, what, doing? what racing board game was it? I've, I've played a few. Uh, this is uh, it's from Asmodee. Uh, it's called Heat, Pedal to the Metal. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. I was a big fan yeah. of... Uh, oh, God. What was that one? Downforce? No. Formula D? No, I uh, it's one that you board game refab, right? Yeah, and I kicked or one of the ones I kick started it. I kick started the next version of it. It's called uh, Rally Man, right? Oh, Rally. yeah, Rally Man, 
Yeah, so I kickstarted the dirt version, which they were coming, and then the bi- company went out of business before they delivered. So, oh really? I never oh, I got know it. About, I didn't know about that. Yeah, these are some. We should do a video on like the best racing board games or something. Yeah, I don't know that if the community would get a kick out of it. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looks like oh, Pistol Pete says he is from just north of the Dells, and he's been wanting to check out Lucky Bob's. Do for sure. Um. If you go, we showed up at about 11.45. Evidently, they don't open till 4, but they're super nice folks, and so they let us walk right in and wander around the whole place. And then as we were getting ready to leave, they are like, by the way, feel free to look around, but we don't open till 4. We were like, oh, sorry. (laughs) During the week, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Just check their hours, and and the door will be unlocked, and they'll let you in, because apparently they sell parts all day long to to people that come in. But um, but yeah, I mean... so Me, you mean my mom, my dad, my daughter all walk through there and, and uh yeah, they just they just let us wander around and it's super cool. A couple couple of dogs in the in the shop and big old track. I, I can't even Yeah, I gotta go back and, and get at least a picture of it because it, it was impressive. Um but yeah, as soon as she said that they weren't open till four and it was like twelve fifteen at that point, I was like eh. Sorry, <laughs> we're out of here. <laughs> you, you you mentioned the 124, but is it their track is 124, or do they actually have? Are they racing 124 scale? They're racing, so it's a wood track. It's eight lanes, and they they race 124, and it's it's like Lexan body, brass chassis. Wow, nothing is interesting because they had a bunch of like Auto World and AFX cars for HO. So there's a huge selection of cars to buy for this, you know, for this scale, mm-hmm. but no, none of our, none of 132s or 124 Carrera scale electrics, anything like that. What they were, they sold parts to build Lexan body, brass chassis. I'm sure wicked fast cars. And and they had four or five uh, HO tracks, and said they also had, I think, another one in the basement and a drag track. Yeah, that is drag strip, a scale drag strip in the basement too. Um, but okay. but yeah, by that by the time they were telling us that, they were also telling us that they were not currently open. So we were like, okay, tee up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely more so, of a race place than a uh, hobby shop, I would say too, right? Although, yeah, like, like you said, apparently yeah, they had plenty of cars, so like, uh, like a and, club uh, that sold parts, parts too, evidently. Yeah, and the tracks. I'm not exactly sure. They were they were Brad's tracks. But I don't know if they were manufactured by him. I don't know if you've heard of Brad Strax. He like designs he's kind of like a world famous, okay, sort of globally famous or U.S. famous um, track designer for for HO at least. Um, but they look like the like Viper Scale Racing, which that's another HO specific um, uh, company that that makes some tracks similar to uh, some of the pre built, pre routed tracks that bolt together. So. Nice. It's very cool. Um, so, can I ask you, your uh, Mr. Paul, some 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 questions? How did um, how did you get about into HO? Is this something that you did uh, early on as a child as well, or did Pete just well, kind of shove this on your throat? <laughs> yeah, so good question. We definitely had an HO track when I uh, was a kid, but it was your basic figure eight, you know, uh, very simple, uh, you know, two lane out of the box kit. Um, you know, the rubber guardrails and the whole whole bit. Um, but, uh, and so really not involved as an adult, I guess as an adult with younger children, quite some time ago, did HO uh, model railroading nice. um, with and for uh, my uh, Pete and his brothers. Um, but uh, not really involved with, with uh, racing cars, but when Pete decided he wanted to make the switch to the other track, and said, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do with, with this track. We had actually just moved into the home that we're in from a condo we were renting for a while. And he's like, would you want it? And I was like, yeah, if we can figure out how to <laughs> get it here. And if you can get it here in one piece, which was, uh, it did get here in one piece. It's a good thing that we got those other parts, uh, some of those track pieces uh, yesterday while we were out and about, as it turns out, because we needed them last night to... Um, do a little repair <laughs> damages. Yeah, really. Did well, it's get, funny. So I hauled HO? this thing up, and it lived, and it was built in my basement. So nice, cool, 
the cool damp area and uh and when when i hauled it up here i put it in the u-haul trailer it was fine in the u-haul trailer but then when we were trying to make sure that it was ready to go fit into his basement we realized it didn't fit so we had to make cut some of this this border off so that we could pivot it around the door anyway while we're cutting it out cutting part of that off we're doing it in his driveway in the blazing sun in September and oh. in, in Milwaukee. And so it's just heating. You, we can just watch the track start to buckle. Oh, no. and, then, and it's like, hurry up, get some ice packs on it. Let's go. <laughs> and oh, so we get it down here and most of it went back, but there was one corner kind of way over there that never, never went back down. Oh, and so it was always like a tough spot. We were powering through it. <clears throat> we managed uh, for for several race nights, and even on Thursday night when I got here, and then yesterday when we were at the shop and we saw some of the replacement parts, we we're like, eh, "Let's get them." You know, I don't know if we'll replace them this weekend. And then, yeah, I had to do some emergency soldering for some wires, and I was like, "Well, we had to rip up some parts really close to that corner, so we might as well just pull up a few more and do those." And of so course, now our racer's job is never done, eh? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. it's like a weekend, it's like having a boat, right? Half the time is 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 spent having fun racing, and the other half is is spent fixing it and making sure it works and maintaining. Well, well, I, I believe we're set up that you guys could show us uh, the track a little more, like a little bit more in detail. Is that is that what we're doing, or it, that didn't work out? Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, we'll we'll have to. You might have to buy us some time while we uh, move the camera around, but yeah, we'll do an overhead shot um, from from the end here. I, I am I'm a little concerned, Joe, that you haven't said anything, and I thought it would be like the first thing on your mouth. You didn't even say it before we went live, but um, tell me, tell me, what did I say? What in I honor say? of the uh, Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals opening day the other day, uh, I nobody in the chat probably knows Cardinals. <laughs> Um, history, uh, but there's a gentleman named Al Rabowski who okay. played for the Cardinals and now he's a commentator uh, and, and does pregame, postgame. And uh, so in honor of opening day, I shaved an Al Rabowski uh, big old <laughs> mustache. Okay, and I so, thought it would okay. be the first thing you would say when, you, it's, when it's, we it's went on, on camera. Mind. Okay, it's been on my, okay, so that's, I was like, I didn't know. Because, I mean, your dad was there. If your dad was there, maybe I'd be like, <laughs> what's with the handlebars? That was the first thing that I, I thought in my head. I'm like, what's with the handlebars, man? I'm like, I love that beard. I can't grow anything. This is just, I can't say it because Liam's in the chat, but it, this is just scruff. This is Brillo pad, okay? This is what I, so I'm like, this guy can grow a beard like that. And now he's like, I'm going to mess around, make some handlebars. And I was gonna, I've been staring <laughs> at this thing. It'll be back in a couple weeks. Episode. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I had to do, I wanted to, yeah. Wanted to clean up for Easter, and then, yeah, I was like, wow, might as well. <laughs> you only live once. <laughs> <laughs> What's that show, American Chopper? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the, like, the like Polly like... <laughs> or Big Paul. I, yeah, whatever the dad's name is. <laughs> the Mad thought, like, Is he doing it because his dad's name is Paul? And I'm like, he's trying to. <laughs> yeah, it's Polly <laughs> and Paul. That looks great. Hey, kudos to you that you oh. can do that. I'm, I can't. I can't. I'm, you know. Yeah, I've yeah. Seen, uh, earlier pictures of you with your like long hair. And the and I'm like, oh man, I wish, I wish, I got, I got nothing. Yeah, that was a, that was a pandemic thing, growing out, growing out the long, long hair and and the ponytail. I had that for a long time, and then it started started falling out. So I was like, I better cut it before it uh, <laughs> before it all falls out. Oh, we're having lights flickering, so hopefully everybody can see us still. Oh, oh. Uh -oh. Joe, say something. Are we back? Oh, Are we back? No. I'm not connected. There we go. We got it. Somebody give us We're thumbs good. up if they can still see us. We can't. Yeah, we just. We're surging something here. You got me? We're good. Uh, I think it might have right, recovered. 
I think it might have recovered. Yeah, I think, okay. Yeah, I think we're back. I I don't know if it's if it's my internet because I've been watching the stream and I'm doing. Yeah, the out. only problem is <laughs> it recovered and they can hear us. But for oh, some reason, whole audio? I can't hear you, Joe. Again. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. What did I do? Okay, say something to me, Joe. Hey man, how you doing? What's going on? You got me? Awesome. Awesome. Is that a good awesome or a bad? Joe awesome? is taking the show on the road. Um, sorry, you're gonna have to bear with us. I'm sure they can hear you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know they can hear you. It's always, why is it always you that can't hear me? This is weird. It's cutting me out again. You're gonna have to fire the engineer, Pete. Yeah, fire myself. <laughs> I'm sure they can hear me too. There we go. I still can't hear you. Yeah, but don't worry about hearing That's Joe. Okay. Oh, thanks, babe. Yeah, my wife. Don't worry about listening to me. I'm, I talk too much anyway, right? <laughs> Jen says we don't need to worry about hearing you because you talk too much. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you guys are drinking. Oh, and goodness. I'm not drinking here. All right, I'm going to do one more thing. All right, you can talk well, you to the crowd, Joe, while I, while I figure this out. You want me to talk to the crowd? All right. Well, I, it was weird because I wanted to ask you guys a question. Um, but you can't hear me, so it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, guys, sorry about this, but uh, what's going on? Okay, let's go through the comments. Um, uh, I completely kicked him off. Sorry, sit tight with us. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, everybody. I'm going to switch here. And he said it just like his mother used to say, and, and uh, that that uh, made it clear that he was really paying attention to everything that was said to him, and we should be careful because it would likely be repeated. <laughs> Say something to me, Joe. Hey, man. Yeah, we're back. I hope everybody can hear hear us. Liam's telling me he can't. And uh, so fast is telling us interesting on and off show this morning. Yeah, that's what happens when I try to pack my entire YouTube studio, live stream studio into a duffel bag and bring it seven hours north. And I don't I don't think it's you, bud. I really think that my Internet's going in and out. It's, we've, we've been having some issues just in the service itself. I think that's the, uh, the major issue because I'm, I'm hardwired in. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, guys, thank you. I think we, everyone can hear us now. Yeah, they're they're telling us we're good. Sorry, guys. Thanks for bearing with us. That's what happens when uh, complete amateur rookies at a live show try to 
get creative and bring it on the road. Um, but yeah, thank, thank you so much for, for sticking with us. Um, yeah. Uh, so, what else? What were we, I don't even remember what we were talking about. Um, but yeah, let's just do, let's do some. I heard, I heard that in the story, by the way, from your dad. I appreciate that. So you did hear it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I can see you guys the whole time. I'll see if I can come up with another one, but I was just trying to fill a little dead air there. Oh, it's all good. I appreciate it. Uh, so Garth, I don't know if you guys heard me, but Garth had asked, are you guys back every other Saturday at nine? Um, I believe so. Yeah, until... that's yeah, that's a game plan, right? So we're, we're going to try to get back to that, that cadence. Um, we're going to try to get back to that cadence. We're, we'll be off next week because um, Joe is going somewhere cool. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but. We'll be off next week. We'll be back on the, the 30th. off the no, 9th, 30th. on the 16th, and then uh, again on the 27th. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be back on every other week. That's the game plan. And then anytime in the future, since we have our act together and we actually have people who want to listen to what we're blathering on about in the morning on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Um, in the future, if one, either Joe or I can't make it, we're going to have a guest on. And so if anybody in the chat wants to, wants to be a guest in the future when that situation inevitably comes up, because it will, um, but uh, let us know. Shoot me or Joe an email. Throw in our Discord. It's in the, uh, it's in yeah. the, the description of this video. Um, that's pretty exciting, the Discord. Uh, it's, it's up and rolling. I don't know a bunch of you have joined already. Um, it's been very Much fun, been very exciting, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, we'll, we post in there the schedule. Um, we'll make sure at least by Wednesday or Thursday of the week that we're going on, we'll, we'll let you know that we're going on. But the, the goal right now is every other week starting this morning. Yeah. And so those right. dates are off the 6th on the 13th. You're kind of went the wrong direction there. I think if we're talking about April. Yeah, that, that 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 sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I Math see Pistol Pete. Yeah. Uh, Pistol Pete saying, um, "Let's see the track." So, one hundred percent. Yes. I definitely want to do that. That was my next segment to go in. This is the point because I want to talk about some uh, technicals behind the track. But I got. Yeah, see that's this cool. Thing. Like, I'm, got, I've been dying to see this thing. Yeah, we got some things. So, if you. You don't want to chat with the group for a minute. I'm going to turn our camera off and mute us while we like bang around and move this camera so we can get a good angle. But, uh, but yeah, give us just a second. We'll, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Sure. Right on. Um, so I know Liam, uh, if you can hear me and everything's good, uh, give me a, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're not familiar with some of the things that we're talking about, by all means, please, uh, or even anybody else. I mean, most of us, most of us know what we're talking about. Um, but uh, for example, his his track is, <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> I just saw the the catch up. You guys missed my first thing. So Liam, uh, if you have any questions, by all means, put some put a cue in front of your your thing, your 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 text, and ask. So what Pete is doing now, what track, what kind of track he has, is a HO scale track, which means that the the scale of the cars are smaller. So whenever you hear anybody talking about AFX or um, Ramjet, not Ramjet, but the, the jet things or whatever. Sometimes, uh, where was Dan? Where's, where's the HO guys explaining this better? Um, he's going to, uh, that's what he's talking about. He's talking specifically about that uh, specific scale, which is smaller. So um, I know as newbies coming in, there might be a lot of information happening when you're going to hear scale auto, you're going to hear uh, Revo slot. You know, Jen was mentioning it too today. She's saying sometimes when you guys talk about, you know, when you say Revo slot and slot it's and stuff, she goes, I'm confused. So it's just a matter of understanding what the name of those companies are. So when people mention those names, we're going to try to do a lot better to um, uh, slow it down and maybe like explain ourselves more, not assume that everyone knows what we're talking about, right? This is for everybody, especially new uh, beginners. Um, so if there are any uh, newbies in the, in the chat, by all means, like always feel free to ask questions. This community is really great for that. I've always, I've been still asking questions, right? I'm no, I'm no professional, but I still ask questions, uh, like on the live streams on Tuesdays, right? Cause I'm just curious about everybody's, uh, everybody's insights and whatnot. So let's see. Um, lucky. I'm 
Small, hopefully, I'm just gonna close this volume here. Um, and show me uh, one, their tracks, uh, two, how to use. Feet is down. Sound is on. My sound is on. Oh man, guys, sorry. Oh, he hasn't heard you for two minutes. Are we back? Can you guys hear us now? Major technical difficulties. Good now. Okay. What about on my end? We're back, and I think you guys should be able to see the track. We're good. Yeah, microphone problems. We're having serious technical issues because I try to pack everything on the road and, and figure it out. But looks like they can hear us. They can see us. Um, can you guys so yeah, hear Joe, me? I don't know if you can see the track, but um, yeah, I was able to see the track the whole time you were setting up. But yeah, it's on a four by eight sheet. Uh, it's four lane. We have it hooked up to a uh, race coordinator and uh, an Arduino. So everything's custom built for the sensors and the light tower. Um, it's a really, really fun project. If you look underneath, it's a bird's nest of wires. Um, but that's how it goes. Uh, but you can kind of see in here, there's a couple of spots, one, two, three, and then this one over the track. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the lights change. So it's green. The lights turn green when the race is going, they turn yellow when there's a caution, uh, red when, before the race starts. And then when the race is over, they flash yellow, uh, white. So that's kind of cool. It's all built into race coordinators, like, uh, you know, built in library. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then there's some, I have some magnetic racing buildings, um, that we, that I built and then, but the rest is almost entirely 3d printed, uh, designed by me. So, um, that's been pretty fun. That's, it's, that's three or four lanes. That's three lanes. It's four. four. It's four. Okay. You can you can make the uh, your screen bigger if you want, Pete. Eh? Go for it. I don't know if my audio will still come through. So, so you designed. Um, you're saying that the lights are synced up. That's part of the program, or you designed that? Yeah. So, like race coordinator. Race coordinator is designed to be used with TrackMate or a couple of other light bridges and, and softwares. I elected to use Arduino and build my own light bridges and sensors. And so when you use Arduino, there's a whole lot of built-in code into the software that runs on the computer that you can use the Arduino to do a lot of different things. And so at each of the stations here on the corners, there's a call button for that specific lane. So there's one on each corner. Um, there's a call button. So you, 
yeah, dad's pressing it now to stop it. And you can kind of see the lights change to yellow. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but just fingers crossed because I, if I change the video again, it's probably all just going to crash and burn again. So um, <laughs> anyway, the, the so we got a call button. We have uh, LED lights that, that uh, work as the fuel gauge at each uh, driver station. So they start to turn off as the fuel burns out. Um, and then the way in the analog that you have to do fueling is that there's two. So over here, you see two light bridges. One is for the actual lap. And the other one is for the end of the pit. And so the way it works is that it's basically, if you stop in between those two lights, the software knows that you're in the pit, you know, quote, in the pit, and, um, and it starts to refuel your tank. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Liam is asking, does it need to be cool uh, if it's functional? Meaning, does it heat up? I think he's asking, does it need to, is there like a, does it heat up too much the track? <laughs> Like, is uh, there a cool down? No. Is that what you mean, Liam? I'm, t I'm taking that as it, does it need to be, like, cool as in awesome cool? Um, <laughs> it is awesome cool. That's like, I'm like, but no, my mind is yeah, like, obviously, it can be either functional and not as cool or cool and not as functional, but it's best to have both. Um, that's <laughs> the short answer, Liam. If, if you're really lucky, you get to have both. Um, but, I mean, some of you guys have seen my track at home. It is not nearly as, as finished or polished as this one um, because I like to be able to change it and so change that layout every couple of months. Um, but I do, every time I come up here and race on this one, it makes me miss the fact that it's fully scenic with fences and lights and light bridges and buildings and all that stuff. So you never know. I may, may make the switch there at, at <laughs> home too, but never say never. Um, no, but no, it's yeah, good. it's it's good if you can have both. If it can be really cool to look at and and uh, so function. how many how many individual uh, Arduino or separate computer programs are uh, being used on the track like at one given time? You've got the fuel. You said you have the light bridges for the sensors for the speed. Well, so have... it's a, it's a little tricky because it's not that, not all of that is being run on the Arduino. It's being run in the software that. Um, okay. And I feel terrible because I can't remember his name. Um, but the gentleman that developed it, um, it's available for free. You know, it's donationware. So you can donate whatever you feel comfortable um, to donate to him. Um, and it's actually to donate to a cause. Uh, and so that's even cooler. But what he did is wrote an Arduino sketch. So that's the software you load on just to the little Arduino board that okay. sends signals to the software to do a multitude of different things, one of them being fuel, um, one of them being uh, I have relays connected to each of the four lanes, and so it doesn't have power on it when the race is off. And then if you press the call button, if I was racing, I press this call button in this corner right here, um, right here. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if I press the call button there, once it restarts, it's going to wait two more seconds. So it's a two second penalty for this driver. So it'll turn everybody else's power on. Wait two seconds and then give this person the power. Um, oh wow! Okay. And it's all like sometimes you got to be a little creative with with the Arduino sketch to to make it work and and to figure it out. Um, but yeah, he has the capability to do a lot of different things with RGB lights and um, Neo Pixels and all kinds of kind of crazy cool stuff. But um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, it's a lot of, a lot of capability if you dig deep and you're willing to connect a whole bunch of weird things to your Arduino board. Um, could, could I see one of the cars rip? Is that a bank curve at the back corner? Yeah. Yep. So that's a banked, it's a twelve and a nine. So twelve on the top, nine inch radius. So how are you guys getting into trouble then? How are you issuing penalties? Like, are the cars drifting out? Are you like pushing other people out of their their well, yeah, go ahead and start it and show yeah, them how. I, I mean, they. Like, remember, I'm, I'm used to, like, a figure eight that I had. That was it. Oh, man. What's going on? <laughs> right then, he would press the call button, <laughs> and it would give him a two-second penalty. Hopefully, I'll saw that jump. 
that was yeah, and like like Dan, I mean Dan's very familiar with <laughs> with HO, right? He's got his whole HO kit, and he's been doing that for a long time, much longer than I even did. And and they when when these cars go off track, they go flying off the track in like all kinds of different directions, and yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So there's not as much, not nearly as much sliding or, or drifting as you do on 132s. Um, especially when we put more powerful magnets, which Dan is doing videos on, on the more powerful magnets you can input in these things. Um, but yeah, we upgraded those magnets so that you get a little more race time, a little less crash time. Um, but yeah. So we bought some new cars yesterday as well. And, uh, Pete showed me how to put magnets in pretty simple, really depending on the car design, I guess. Yeah. And we just like just like in 132, there's different manufacturers of cars, right? And some of the manufacturers of cars for HO have been around for a very long time. And some are, you know, some some racers in HO are very loyal to their brands. We what I have found on this track and what we've stuck with even when we bought cars yesterday is that AFX Mega G Plus stick the best to the track. You get the best racing whether you're super experienced and been racing on this track for a long time, or whether this is your first time grabbing a controller. Um, and so we love those. Love that your head's chopped off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. And so the, the new cars we got, which also ironically are videos that Dan's doing lately. So he'll appreciate these, but um, they're the GT forties. So little, oh man, those cars look so good. Tiny GT forties, and then we get four of them for the uh, for each lane. Um, uh, and initially, so when, race, when, race, when I initially built the, the track, car? sorry, I, I missed you. But when when we when we initially built the track, we were doing the Mega G Plus, the stock cars. So and then I just stripped them down and repainted them to the lane color. And Dan's, Dan's saying, level 42. I'm pretty sure that's what we just upgraded these to. Unfortunately, I did not, you know, didn't think ahead and didn't, when I pulled them out of the old cars and when I bought them, I did not label what level they were. So they're stronger than the stock. I don't remember if they're 42 or if, I think the next one's like 54 or 52. Um, I don't know which one, which one we upgraded to, but it's, uh, they you, haul you and they stick to the, to the track like glue. I mean, and you saw. Yeah, you're them. talking about the magnets, right? The level of the magnets. Yeah, it's it's wild because the amount of like there's there's hop up kits for hop up kits for 132. You know, like you can buy all kinds of different parts for 132. I mean, we've seen it. We've talked about all the different options, but the amount of options in HO is like mind boggling. Because um, like these stock cars that that I that we were using, um, they have I put independent front wheels on them so they spin independently from each other um those are from viper scale racing they have crazy amount of yeah they have crazy amount of of uh cool parts but they're like it's basically like washers <laughs> it's like a little washer for the front wheels um and it, you know it's just like the same goal in in 132 is you don't want those you want those wheels to have as little grip and have as little impact on the racing as you can so, um, so when you guys race, are you all racing the same type of car to make it fair or does it really like not matter? Like how do you do yeah, that? Yeah. So the cars, what we do is, uh, a lot of people call it like IROC racing. Um, mm -hmm. so a lot like the IROC series in real life that happened for a while that all four cars are the same car. We try to make all the same modifications to all four cars, but the car stays in the lane and you rotate through each lane. Oh, okay. So when you do a race, it's technically four heats, or you're racing four heats, depending on how many people. There might be more than four actual heats. Um, but yeah, so as as a race progresses, you you race, you know, red lane and then blue lane and then green lane and then yellow lane, and it combines the time for all of those heats. And we do 15, 15 lap races because it's a good sweet spot. You got to get about one refuel per fifteen laps. Um, 
But yeah, and then it combines your time for all four lanes, and then that's who the winner is. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and this is all in the, in, the, in the app? It's all in the software. Okay, so where are you, wait, where are you refueling then? How does that work? It's in between these two. So like these are light bridges, right? Um, and it's basically just LED lights that point down at the track to, and then built into the track. So, you know, drill the hole into the track and there's a, a, a photo sensor in there. And so as the car passes over that sensor, it breaks that light beam and it registers to the Arduino that like this signal is down and that sends it to the computer. And so the computer knows it's a lap. But there's two of them because the, this front one is the, um, the actual lap counter. And then this guy over here, the, the one further back, is it's like the pit end. And so when you drive the car and stop it in between those two sensors, it knows you're in the pit. Okay. And so then so, it, it blinks. So you, well, you can't quite see the screen, but there is on the, maybe you can see the bottom one there. There is uh, a fuel gauge on the, the monitor screen, but also on the uh, control here that Pete was showing, um, LED lights to show how much fuel you have left. So they gradually go off till you're down to one. And when you're out of fuel, a couple things happen. Maybe you want to oh, talk yeah. about that, Pete? That's pretty cool, too. So I eventually, like right before I shifted up here, I was doing all kinds of crazy upgrades to it. But one of them was adding relays. So there's a, each, each track has its separate power. Each lane has its separate power supply. Um, and the reason I do that is, one, you don't get as much fluctuation when a car goes flying off. Um, but also so I could do individual relays. So there's four relays underneath the track. And when, when you start, or when you run out of fuel, the, it's set to randomly cycle that relay. Um, and so it makes your car sputter kind of erratically around the track. So it makes it more difficult. Other cars can pass you. It doesn't count your lap. Um, and it's just, it's just kind of a goofy thing. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I hate it. Usually I love it when somebody else runs out of fuel and I hate it when I run out of fuel. Um, but you know, you know how that goes. So the other comment I'll make is that it's a little tricky to stop right between the two towers. Um, I can imagine. And when you are sputtering because you're out of fuel, it's even harder. So, so if you go okay. past, you have to do a whole nother lap, which does not count to get to the, to the refuel in the pit. This yeah, it's basically like, if you run out of fuel, you're SOL. You're not. You're not going to win that race. I have unless uh, your competitors all do as well, which sometimes that's happens. That's right. <laughs> that has happened before. Like for for me, everything you're saying, I'm just like it's kind of like new, and I'm in, and I'm in awe because I mean you you see them on YouTube and whatnot. And I haven't really been paying that much attention, with the exception of like uh, Slot Valley Racing. Um, and Dan talking about his HO and me trying to get some information to get my dad to get his, you know, maybe put his cars on my track and figuring out something like that. But this is the first time I actually see, um, like up close and personal, a full HO scale and all the um, bells and whistles that come with it that I didn't think was possible. And so to me, I'm like, I'm like being introduced to it to the first time again. It's like clearly I came into digital. I'm like, we can do all that in digital. Uh, but yeah, at the same well, time, I'm I'm super impressed that this is this was ever even possible in HO because I think as a kid, had I known this, right? I mean, okay, Arduinos didn't exist. When yeah, I, when we were kids, this was not possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, so this is like I'm like, oh man, this is like, yeah, because like, the, the Arduino and the I mean, I'm sure people made some version of this, but it certainly wasn't as sophisticated as this because just not not everything was available. I mean, even the LEDs, right? Yeah, the LEDs, the the color changing LEDs for sure. The 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 IR the light photo sensors. sensors, the photo sensors were. I mean, those are like ten cents a piece right yeah, now. So small, and they're so small that you can embed them in the track and not worry about it. But it's just, yeah, it 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 would have been if you would have told somebody you were doing this fifteen or twenty years ago, they would laughed at you. Um, oh really? Okay, because my next question is, is this considered? like a next level track are guys in the ho hobby now maybe dan you can you can answer this as well is this like what's standard now this is this what's expected if you've got a ho track like to be up to par or it's just everyone's taste is different right for ho like i don't i'm not on like 
Because if there was a club that had this, I'd race it. I'd have no issues with that. Yeah. Do you, do you feel that this is like above and beyond what you've done? Like you've taken it personal and you've, or is this like, this is what normal people, like not normal people, but uh, what the average Joe is doing. It's definitely, track, it's definitely, well, to the level that, that I built this track to with the flashing lights, with the fuel gauge, with the relays, with everything. That's pretty rare. I think that people went, did like every feature, but like, that's also sort of the reason why I transitioned to 132 is that, you know, I was using this race coordinator software and he had the Arduino sketch. And so I had basically implemented every single feature, probably not, I don't remember now, but just about every feature that I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm going to try that. I'm going to add this. I'm going to add this. And it was slowly adding bits and pieces each time. And, and uh, I think there are lots of people who probably have fuel gauge lights. There are probably lots of people that have the two sensors. That's probably the most common is the two sensors with the, with the pit. Like if you're, if you're using Arduino with race coordinator, you're probably in implementing that. But I think a lot of people probably stop there. And like many things, I went all the way um, <laughs> and over the top. And, and yeah, so... Pete, probably uh, like, pretty rare that ever somebody has implemented all of these features but um it looks like i can't see from here so i'm gonna move over but it looks like slot valley is is, is chiming in yeah um yeah like clearly you've done an amazing job uh hats off literally uh <laughs> to you uh i'm like floored here i i was not expecting this i was like okay yeah you put a couple likes you put a couple things like the only thing I understood from HO was, um, again, going back to my dad, he had this uh, computer system for AFX that was a grandstand and it had two little spots where the cars had to sit exactly. And it was a little digital uh, fuel gauge. And if you didn't fuel up, you wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't count the laps. Like that would, to me was the most amazing thing I've ever seen as far as HO, but that was something AFX was selling uh, separately. Right, so you're telling me now you've got lights and the and the way it looks and the and the the fuel gauge um, itself on individual uh, call call automatic stop buttons for everybody at the corner. Like this is an arcade game, right? Yeah. And, well, game. and everybody in the chat is is making me blush. I I appreciate all the kind comments. I put a lot of work and effort into this, and it was. Well, I got to the point, well, like I was saying, I got to the point where I'd implemented just about everything I could possibly do to this thing, every feature that was available with Race Coordinator. And so then I was like, okay, I want to be able to tweak the fuel. I want to be able to tweak this a little bit more. And since it's donation where the, the gentleman who developed the software, and I feel terrible for not knowing what his name is. I'll look it up. Um, but uh, since it's donation where it's not like he has a full-time job and a life and I don't even think, I don't even think he had an actual track set up for a while. Like didn't even have one, but he was still working on it and developing it and updating it. And, um, it's pretty, pretty cool that he was doing that. But I also like when I would ask for like, Hey, can we, could you add this to the software? He, he couldn't, or he didn't have time or like I was the only person in the world that wanted that feature. So obviously not worth his time. Hmm. Um, but and so I started, I was like, well, you know what? I like to do things to the max. So I'm going to try to write my own software to make it, make it do all that. And I was like six months deep into that and had like four buttons that worked, but didn't do anything on my software. And, and then this, then my 132 track came up on sale on, on Facebook marketplace. And I was like, yeah, well that one, I just plug it into a Bluetooth dongle and it does everything I want. Okay. I buy it. Um, and it was a super, <laughs> it was a great deal. And, but before I bought it, I, I called, I called dad and I said, Hey, do you, does this have a home in your basement? Cause if so, I'm, I'm going to get a new track right now. Um, uh, I know you have family and everything, but if ever that track needs a home, you call me, <laughs> you, you call me. It's Dave something. I can't find his last name. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Thank you. Well, we'll post um, in, the, in the info after this guy. I mean, I'll, I'll. I'll uh, donate to him and I don't even have a HO scale. I mean, come on. It's really cool too because the donation is goes to uh, a foundation because um, I believe his son passed away 
And so the foundation is, is in memory of, of Noah. Noah. And it's really cool. So you can donate as much money as you want. Um, and yeah, just a, a super cool guy who is developing a lot of that software without even having a track to really test it on. <laughs> um, and I know Marty has, da has dabbled in a little bit for uh, 132. And I know that the day the developer was working on it working with digital, I don't know how far he got. I never tested that because um, Smart Race worked so well right out of the box and was just like, yeah, let's go. Um, but I've been working, I've been testing um, uh, fast laps um, over the last couple of weeks. Oh, and yeah. it's, how's that going? It's really cool. It's a very like limited version of it, right? Um, because he's just he's just given like a sample to like test it out and see how it's going. Um, so it's very limited in what, but it's like a peak, a peak to, you know, a sampling of what he's capable of that. And I'm betting that with some time, he will be able to to add a lot of things that would, I could implement a lot of the features on this on a on a digital track. I'm sure. Um, with call buttons and that sort of thing, particularly. So, okay, besides learning that, like, because we've always spoken about this, and you said, oh, I did this, and I did that, and whatever, so I'm, I'm just, like, I'm picturing wires and, and Arduinos and just, like, stuff stuck around, like, hot glued together. I did not realize, um, you know, you've got this beautiful genius mind here, and as we're, you and I are starting to, like, know each other more and talking, uh, you know, whatever. And I'm realizing that you're like, when you jump into a project, you jump into a project. All right. Yeah. It's a, it's anything, a blessing you know, like and a curse, about... right? Yeah. A blessing. Well, <laughs> Cause sometimes well, I get, well, like, like with, and of course, you know, I think you're probably baiting me to talk about my pit garage. Um, if not, I'm going to take it as that, but, uh, yeah. I've been working on the pit garage. There's a video, a little video clip on the discord. So, there's you a, there's see a, it if you join the Discord, guys. There's a plug for the Discord. Go check it out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's one that, like, I, I got so deep in the weeds on that project that I had to, like, step away from it from a little bit because it was yeah. aggravating me and I wasn't having fun doing it anymore. So I stepped away from it. And then, you know, a couple months passed. We've been doing the videos. We've been talking about it. And you and, and I showed it. Uh, I showed one of the very early iterations to, uh, to Dan when I was on his show on uh, slot valley racing and yes, um he's been asking me about it you've been asking me about it and so finally a couple weeks ago i started getting back into it and uh yeah just before like literally like 12 hours 24 hours before i left town to come here it works um so that's pretty cool and then of course i'll iterate on that but um but yeah check out log into the or join the link there's a link to join the discord in the description and then in there is, uh, well, there's a bunch of cool stuff going on now because we got a bunch of cool members that are contributing, which is awesome. But also, um, it is, I have a short little video clip of the doors opening and closing. And so eventually down the road, probably a couple months from now, uh, I should have that available. If you have a 3D printer, you'll, you'll be able to, to, you know, give me a couple bucks to, to print the files yourself. Um, and I'm also looking at possibly printing the printing the actual model and uh, and selling okay, that. Okay, what yeah, well, hold on, I have to interject there. Uh, what Pete doesn't realize is that I'm uh, I'm taking I'm managing this project and uh no sales or anything will be uh done until we discuss ourselves uh before you give anything away here, Mr. I created something really great and uh want to give it free <laughs> to the world there. So, <laughs> so wait, hold, hold your horses there, buddy. Well, that was part of the reason why I stopped because I was fretting about that and fretting about People, I don't know. Anyway, I know you're too. Like, oh, I don't know. This is easy. You have to. People have to appreciate your work, right? And they they won't think it's special if you're just. Anyways, whatever. That that's a whole other. We can we can talk about that another day. I just I just want you to be 100 percent respected because after today, I mean, uh, two things. One, um, for the Discord, Liam, if you want to join, please ask your parents. Uh, there's not really an age restriction on our Discord, but please just ask your parents, uh, just because you are 10 years old. Um, and two, um, four, oh, uh, what was the second thing I was going to talk about? Uh, we we're talking about um, the 3D. 3D oh, printing in the garage. It's all on the Discord. Yeah. Discord's cool. Discord. If you're not on it, 
You should be. There's a link in the description. It doesn't expire anymore. So you can click it and you can actually join. Um, a lot of good yeah, conversation in there. It's been fun because even just the past week, we've had, what, like probably 10 people join us? 10 yeah. more people? Um, so we're getting a good crowd. We're getting some good conversations. We're, we're growing that, that bit of the community. That's something that Joe and I wanted to give back to the group. Um, you know, we, and we've been talking about it since January. We just finally, you know, well, Joe finally kicked my butt and said, Hey, I'm going to do it instead of waiting for you to get off your butt and do it. And so Joe lit the fire and, and got it rolling. And it's been a lot of fun chatting with a lot of you. There's YouTubers on there. There's non YouTube people on there. Um, it's just kind of a fun place to have like conversational chats about slot cars. So it's been yeah. a lot of fun. And we want people to feel free to just post your pictures, talk about a bit about yourself, what's going on. And let's just get, keep this conversation going. Right. And uh, much appreciated. And Pete, you know, obviously dealing with my OCD as well when it comes to certain things. So Pete likes to, uh, for some reason, I don't know why still listens to me ramble half the time and uh, <laughs> we're still friends. So that's good. Uh, <laughs> And I get to meet his dad today, and everything's great. Uh, Mr. Paul, you've been awesome. Uh, thank you for letting uh, for bringing us into your home, for sure. Um, and on this Easter weekend, and I just wanted to uh, mention one thing. I, I you know, I'm not because just because it's ten o'clock, so why not? Those of you who um, ever wanted to dabble into, uh, I mean, we call it Arduino, but basically it's a programmable little computer that you can do a lot of things with. Um, and Pete's really like, you know. Uh, really, the, oh, that was the second thing I wanted to say. Uh, because you're so into it, I think uh, your viewers and your subscribers would probably like a quick video or a, a detailed video about this track. I think you should do like a, a pass through, explain the track, say, hey, this was my track, childhood, whatever, and go through it one by one. I think that would really uh, do really well on your channel, right? Like, I like you have to showcase this thing. This thing is the thing of genius, uh, beauty. We're we're talking about it. <laughs> today but we have like today to do it and it's one of those things where i can set up the camera and think about what we're going to talk about and show all the time or we could spend that hour and a half two hours racing so we'll see which one wins today <laughs> we might just race all day and well, uh, you know this might yeah, be it no. for the track but we'll at very least get an up close shot of the cars and and then whipping around the track and, and some of the different features so we'll at least do that um but yeah okay. it's uh I love it. And I think it's so cool that, that all of you love it too. So um, really appreciate it. But I think we're at the end. One, one last thing I saw on there so fast was asking what I'm drinking. We're instead of coffee, like I do when I'm at home, we're up in Wisconsin. So my dad and I are drinking the, uh, the Wisconsin Bloody Marys and with a beer chaser, beer chaser, like they do it up here. Um, so yeah, and then Joe joined us halfway through. <laughs> He well, felt left out, so he's joining us too. Um, but this is not a normal Saturday morning cartoons. Well, it might be the new normal. We'll, <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but but yeah, it's it's been a blast. I really appreciate you guys dealing with us. Oh yeah, and go Battle Hawks. Go Battle Hawks. <laughs> Battle well, Hawks XFL take... starting this afternoon. I know you guys have your 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 family uh, get together, so I don't want to take up too much time. But I just just wanted to mention quickly. Uh, for so for someone like me going back to the Arduino, um, I had started this back in the um, when we had the, the the pandemic and whatnot. I figured I'd learn a bit about programming, and there's this really and I'm not sponsored by them at all, okay? But there's a really cool program, really cool product out there called Thirty Days Lost in Space, and it's this little kit. I think they're on version two. Uh, it's basically an Arduino kit that comes with sensors and wires. And it comes with a little Arduino. I even bought an extra one. Uh, this is called actually the Hero Board. And it's uh, invert.io. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, invert.io. That might be flipped for you guys. I'm not sure. And it works on all the platforms. And you go to their website. You sign up. This thing's not expensive uh, for what it is. And it teaches you the program. Uh, and you go through, like, your the story is your, like, uh, you wake up, you're in your, your, your spaceship and everything's off. So you got to like one by one, start turning things on and learning how to make stuff. And they walk you through it really well. My only gripe about the things that the guy who's explaining it is kind of like your science teacher who was like probably really boring. Um, but I mean, if I can pick it up, anybody can pick it up. And uh, for those of you who like think like, oh, this is too complicated. You start with this, start with this and you'll, you'll catch on. You'll realize it's not that 
it's not that complicated and the, the community is so big and grabbing programs to do this and, and adding things to sensors and whatnot. I know I'm kind of rushing through it because I don't want to take up too much of uh, Pete and his family's time, but, uh, and hopefully my mic didn't crash again, <laughs> but uh, that's it. So lost in lost 30 days, lost in space. Um, maybe we'll put the, um, the info up in the, in the description, but other than that, I just wanted to mention that if anyone's interested and I'm not sponsored by these guys whatsoever. So, uh, that's it. That's my two cents. This is, this has been awesome for me guys. Honestly, and as, as an actual plug to that, that's exactly how, not that exact kit, but a very kit, very similar is exactly how I got started with Arduino. Um, and it's just, you just build on it. You learn one thing and you build another and you add a new feature and, to be honest, the parts that came in a kit that I bought very similar to that are the ones I used as the prototype for the garage that I'm building. Like same same plugs, same buttons, same everything that came in a kit just like that. So super cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's I think it's about that time. I'm about empty on my Bloody Mary, so it's time to decide to you know well, make another or, or get a cup of coffee. <laughs> but but yeah, I appreciate everybody for for joining us and and muscling through the uh technical difficulties early this morning uh we powered through it and it yeah it worked out we got there yeah man live and learn thank you so much each show's an adventure but yeah thank you all so much for joining us um like i said we'll be off next week and we'll be back the week after math is hard so i don't know what the dates are but i'll put them in the description um (laughs) but yeah thanks so much thank you guys Nice to meet you, Mr. Paul. Thanks for having me. Of course. Anytime.